you want to keep your brain healthy, or maybe you're caring for someone who already has a vulnerable brain, meaning they're either experiencing memory problems or they've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. If so, there are seven medications that you need to know about. So stay tuned to this episode where we're going to talk about seven medications to avoid to protect your memory. Welcome back to This is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm Dr. Melissa Batchelor, and I am a nurse, nurse practitioner, and I wear a lot of different hats in my work, including hosting this weekly podcast to bring you news and information on aging, caring for someone living with Alzheimer's disease, and a wide range of topics that I hope will help move us towards becoming an age-friendly world, because when things are age-friendly, they're friendly for everyone. So if you like the podcast, the best way to help me grow and support the podcast is to like it, share it, and leave a review in whatever platform you've tuned in on today. Because no matter how old you are today, we are all aging, and these issues are going to become increasingly important. If you're a millennial, there are things that need to be in place when you reach the age of 65. So we have about 20 to 25 years to get these things in place to help you age with the support and choices that will help you, just like the people that are 65 today. Your likes, shares, and reviews help get the information out to help more people dealing with these issues. But right now, let's get going on this week's episode. So I'm Dr. Melissa Batchelor. I'm a nurse and a nurse practitioner, and I'm the host of This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. Um, Thank you for joining me for today's episode. And I have three ways that we can connect. Um, The first is to go to my website, melissabphd.com and you can sign up for my weekly newsletter. The second is I've started a Facebook community and it's named after the podcast. And I've also started a YouTube members only section um, here on YouTube. Um, if you're a YouTube member, you get early access to all of um, all of my episodes. Um, and I'll also keep you up to date on HYU, which is a membership library that I'm starting where I'm organizing all of the episodes that I have by topic. So it's easier to kind of find the information that you might be looking for. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode where I'm talking about seven medications to improve your memory and to avoid. So anticholinergic medications actually block acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that's found in the body. And when it's taken, um, it can actually make you really drowsy. And it's actually the opposite. It does the opposite of the medication, what a medication would do that we give you to treat um, Alzheimer's disease. Anything like an Aricept or an Exelon, those medications are actually designed to help the brain increase the amount of acetylcholine in it. Particularly if you're taking something for Alzheimer's disease, you definitely need to be avoiding anticholinergic medications. Anticholinergic medications are part of what we call the Beers criteria. And I'm going to put a link um, in the description below so that you can see that the full list And basically what the Beers criteria does is it looks at all the evidence for different medications and tells providers which ones are at increase a risk for an older adult for having a fall, being hospitalized, or having some sort of adverse event. So they're kind of like the try to avoid, uh, but if you're going, if you have to use them, you need to use them with caution and monitor them. So basically what the Beers criteria is. So now let's get to the medication list. So the first is a sedating antihistamine. So this is something as common as Benadryl, Um, but when you take Benadryl, it makes you more drowsy. It blocks the acetylcholine in your brain and therefore increase your risk for falls. So um, try to avoid Benadryl at all costs. If you need um, some type of antihistamine, take something like a Claritin and be sure you don't take the D, like Claritin D, because if you have high blood pressure, because that D is a decongestant and that can actually um, raise your your blood pressure. Just stick with the plain Claritin if you need antihistamine. Number two are PM versions of over-the-counter pain medications. So the PM part means that they have some type of mild sedative in them, and it's usually an antihistamine. So again, it's going to increase your risk for getting confused, um, increase your risk for falls, which increases your risk of ending up in the hospital. So no PMs. Number three, medications for overactive bladder. So this is anything like a ditropan or a detrol. Um, again, while um, those medications are meant to target your bladder to help with urinary incontinence, uh, particularly like urinary frequency, that medication also impacts uh, the acetylcholine in our in your brain. So if you're going to take that type of medication, just be sure that you're keeping an eye out on your memory and talking to your provider. Um, in case um, they need to discontinue it for you. Number four, medications to treat motion sickness or dizziness. 
So this could be something like antivert, but it could also be something as simple as a scopolamine patch that you would put on the back of your ear, maybe if you're going to be take, going on a cruise or going out on a boat. So if you're going to use a scopolamine patch, just be very careful um, with any of these types of medications um, because they can impact your memory and in impact your balance. So just keep that in mind. Number five, medications for itching. So this could also be Benadryl but it could also be a prescription medication known as Vistaril um, that's been given to you for either itching um, or hives. Medications for nerve pain. And the ones that fall into this class are typically our older, what we call tricyclics. So something like an amitriptyline or a nortriptyline. Um, so if you're taking any medication for nerve pain, just make sure that it's not one of these medications that has um, the antihistamine properties to it. Number seven are muscle relaxants. So this would be something that might be given to you to kind of relax the muscles of your neck or your back, something like, um, like a Flexeril um, that also has, an, has antihistamines in it and needs to be avoided. And you might ask, well, why are you telling me about all these? Wouldn't my provider know that these medications were on the Beers criteria? And I would say that no, not all providers know because not all providers are paying attention to the special needs that they that older adults have when we're prescribing medications. So it's better if when someone prescribes you a medication that you're talking to your pharmacist and your provider to make sure that there aren't any um, antihistamines and those medications are not on the Beers criteria. So how can you reduce your risk and find out if you're on an anticholinergic medication? You can use the link below. Um, it's also on my website for this episode on melissabphd.com. It's an anticholinergic burden calculator. And there you can go in and type in your medications to find out if any of the medications you're on are do ha are anticholinergic in any way. That way you can go back and talk to your provider, even talk to your pharmacist about reducing the dose of the medication or just substituting it out for a safer alternative. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode. Um, please go to my website, melissabphd.com to check out other episodes and the blogs that go with them. Also, you can sign up for the Facebook group called This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World, or you can join the YouTube members only section and get early access to all the episodes. And I look forward to seeing you in either of those new communities. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. You can check out other episodes on this platform or visit my website at melissabphd.com. Thanks to listeners like you. In the first 18 months of This Is Getting Old, we have reached a ranking of top 10% globally. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your support in getting making that happen. I'm also really excited to let you know that you can now work with me directly, either one-on-one -on -one or you can join one of the groups that I coach. Um, particularly if you're an adult child dealing with an aging parent or a caregiver trying to manage the complexities of someone living with Alzheimer's disease. In the show notes, you can also find information about how to reach out and contact me directly, and I hope to work with each of you very soon as we discover and share more ways to make the world more age-friendly for everyone. My website also has information about how to contact me for speaking engagements, or if you have someone you'd like to recommend as a show guest for This Is Getting Old. If you have a product or service in the aging space that you would like to advertise um, and or sponsor an episode, there's more information about that on my website, and you can also find books and courses that I've developed and learn more about the products and services that I recommend. So don't forget, if you like the podcast, the best way to help me grow and support it is to like it, share it, and leave a review in whatever platform that you've tuned in on today. Your likes, shares, and reviews help increase my rating and my rankings and also help other people find the podcast. I look forward to reading your reviews and hearing from you. 